Hello and welcome to Refuse. As always, I'm Plume Noir and my fill light battery died over here. Um, the I didn't want to wait for the charger to go. My fill light over there is working. This light's working. I I guess we're going to deal with some shadows over here. I hope you don't mind. So maybe I should put some tin foil up. Maybe next time. Anyway, I don't want to wait for the battery to charge. So let me just get right into things. I was going to write a script for this, but I figured let's do this on the fly. Let's wing it. That'll be fun. So the G.I. Joe Classified Series. This is the Target exclusive Python Patrol, number 97. And I am not a fan of the Python Patrol or Tiger Force repaints. Just not really my thing. However, after seeing Gun Bunny customs video about this figure i have completely changed my mind and i will say this might be the best figure of 2023 and there's a big asterisk at the end of there <laughs> so let me just start off i'm going to give a shout out as i mentioned to gun bunny customs i stumbled a couple weeks ago upon a video he had just put up great channel by the way if you're into customs highly recommend them highly, highly recommend them the guy's good he did a switch, um, he did a kit bash with the Python Patrol Cobra Officer with the OG Cobra Officer, which was number, uh, I think, 37? I want to say it was number 37, where oh, there's Butters. <laughs> She's going to be upset because she can't get on camera, so you may hear her in the background trying to get on camera. Anyway, uh, Gun Bunny did a switch. He did a kit bash where he took the boots and gloves and the webbing, even the knees, from the Python Patrol officer, switched it with the Cobra Trooper. I'll probably put some screenshots up here. And I'm, I am going to link that video, so major shout out to him. And I really like the way that the two figures looked. And I gotta say, I took inspiration from him, and I kit bashed it myself. Unfortunately, I have him upstairs, so I should bring him down. But I took inspiration, did the same thing, but I did things a little bit differently. And no, <laughs> no diss to him. Uh, that's the thing about customizing. It's your toy. You can do whatever you want with it. And there's really no hard, fast rules to things. Um, I mean, sure, I'm not going to be able to dye the black here white. But there's certain things you can do different. Each person has their own methods. And I realized after I did mine, I changed some things. I didn't do it the way he did. I realized this is the best figure of 2023 in this line for customizing. There's the asterisk for customizing. If you missed out on the original uh, Cobra Trooper, which was way early in the line, it goes for, I think, like 40 bucks these days, um, maybe a little bit more, yeah, give or take. If you missed out on that, you can make a great figure. And like I said, Gun Bunny's kit bash was great, but I think it could be better. And I will explain how you could do that with one figure. And I figured this would be, as I was doing mine, this would be a great novice tutorial video for customizers. If you've never customized before and you've always wanted to get into it, this is the figure that is perfect for it. Because in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some of the things you've probably heard of a lot, such as boiling and popping. Um, we're going to do some dyeing. And, you know, not actually uh, dying, but actual <laughs> dying the figure, D-Y-E, and painting. And again, this is all simple. I'll show you the tools you need to, that you'll need to do this. Nothing really too expensive. Um, most of the things you can get at your local dollar store, so you'll be fine. So with the intro out of the way, let's go ahead. We're going to open this figure and take a quick look at it. Okay, so here is the... Python Patrol Cobra Officer figure. This is a Target exclusive. And uh, this Butter's talking. I told you you'd be hearing her. This is a Target exclusive. Um, a lot of the Target exclusive, actually a lot of the chain exclusives, including like Walmart, you might get lucky. You might find this at your local, your local Ross or Ollie's outlet store. Um, I haven't been having that kind of luck lately, but I've been seeing a lot of people on Reddit have been having some amazing luck. Uh, I've only been finding the uh, Snake Eyes movie figures. So, But if you can't get this at Target, you don't want to pay secondary prices. Um, I haven't looked up what the secondary market is on this. I do know some of the Target stores, as of the time of this filming, just after Christmas, 
they still have them in stock. Not all of them, but you might still be able to get this figure. Um, if you can, I highly recommend it. Good figure. But as I said, it is a Target exclusive. So I have a couple of them still open. I'm going to use this one because this one actually was a little bit crushed. You can see it's a little bit torn. And it was already open. Now, Hasbro has been doing the... Um, the, the non-plastic, you know, you can't see the figures. Um, they're getting rid of that, thankfully. So, I will be honest, I did take a peek to make sure that the right figure was in here, and I didn't get a swap. So, let's go ahead. We're going to take this figure out. I'm not going to go through a whole articulation thing, but we're going to take a look at what's in here, and I'll explain what I'm going to do. So, let's go ahead. Let's go slide it out. So, as you see, here is the figure itself. Uh, it's got these little tie things. They're not metal or twist ties. They're just kind of nice biodegradable ties. I like these. Um, hope they all keep going with these. So, I don't really have nails. So, let's kind of dig in here. And yeah, once again, loosened enough to get them out of the box. So, there we go. This is the figure. And I'm just going to throw this part off to the side here. Now, if this looks familiar, it is. Again, it's almost exactly a one-for-one -one, uh, redo of the Cobra, uh, sorry, Cobra Officer. Except for, I think the torso is, I'm not sure about the back, but this top part is the Cobra Trooper. Uh, you can tell he doesn't have the pips on the side here, so... Um, the nice thing about this being used as a Cobra Infantry or... Cobra Trooper is that it does have the red, the red insignia, where the Cobra Officer has the gray. That's why these boot, these gloves and boots look really good with that. So, um, before I get into that, I'm going to pull out the Foot Locker, again, 97, and I'm going to pull out the accessories. Does anyone else keep the, the, the Foot Locker with these figures? I throw out the boxes, but I keep these. Even though I don't use the box to store accessories, I uh, I pick up these things, these little, oh, my bird's going to bark. I pick up these barks, these boxes um, at, uh, I get them at Harbor Freight. they got dividers in here um, that you can separate. They're usually good for all the different parts. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to open this up. And we're going to dump all that out. Double check in here, make sure there's nothing in there. Oh, that could be foreshadowing for something I'm going to mention later. Okay, throw that off to the side. So, we do get the spare head. Uh, I call it the Mortal Kombat head. You know, get over here. I know it looks like Sector, but we're going to put that over. Uh, he has his helmet. Has his little holster. His gun holster goes in the back. He's got his guns. And as you see, he's got his ammo clips, so, and we got the goggles. Let's slide that off to the side. And he's got his knife. Now, I'm not going to do anything with the knife, even though it has a red handle, because I kind of like it goes with the mask and the insignia. I'm also going to keep this head, because I like the classic, you know, like the classic 80s line of the, the mask. Now, if you're wondering why this is a Cobra Trooper, but he has a, I'm uh, sorry, Cobra Officer, but he has the red insignia instead of the gray. Long lore story about that, that back when they originally did the Python uh, Patrol and the Tiger Force with the uh, Real American Hero original three-inch line, they switched up the bodies and the mold that was the Cobra Trooper was the Cobra Officer and vice versa. So, uh, And of course this, they're kind of keeping with it, kind of not, but... Lore, let's not even get into it. It's this is the Python Patrol Cobra Officer. We're dealing with that. So we got the uh, we got the clips, and so we're just gonna pop this in here. Now I'm only doing this just for uh, for sake of the video, um, and also so I don't lose. Them. So we're just gonna pop that in there. Already has a sight in there, and let's go ahead and clip this thing in. Now. We won't be dying the weapons because they're already black. So I'll slide this off to the side. We won't be dying that. We won't be dying the head. 
I think we'll do the goggles. I think we'll go ahead and do that. We will be dyeing this. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate the boots, the gloves, the harnesses, the belt, this, and even the arm piece. And I'm going to take the, the legs and the lower torso, the crotch piece off. And uh, that will, these odd colored parts and not black parts are not going to be dyed. Uh, the the non-black parts are the ones that are going to be dyed. I will not be removing the knees. I'll come to that in a bit. I know Gun Bunny did, but I'll explain why I'm not. And the harness will be able to slip that off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this aside, and I'm going to show you what you need to do all this, you know, all the tools and stuff you're going to need. So I'll be back in just a minute. Oh my God, this is so cluttered. I probably should have pulled back, but I had the camera and the lighting all set up. I didn't want to restage everything. So I have pretty much everything here that we're going to need. And I'll go over the items and I'll show them off, uh, what they'll be used for. And most everything you can get at the dollar store. There's a few things in here that uh, I have sent around that are you know kind of broken. I can't use for everyday use. So I use them for dying or working on action figures so i'm gonna go over some of these things here i kind of want to do them in order but it's kind of a cluttered mess so we got paper towels uh always have a lot of paper towels on hand so let's go ahead and do that um and for the record in case i haven't mentioned it this is not my normal workspace my normal workspace is actually much more cluttered i just put some a foam board down to make things a little bit easier so you can see what I was doing. A lot of times I have on my desk, uh, my workbench, I put down a lot of old newspapers and uh, mail advertisements uh, to, you know, soak up the paint or whatever. Um, but this I'm using just some foam board and I have some of my other uh, projects in process here, such as, you know, we've got some Iron Man and Iron Spider here. Um, just to show off that one thing is never rush. We're going to we're going to start with that tip. Now I'll have a few miscellaneous tips along the way, but don't rush. You're in no hurry. If you need to have an action figure uh customized immediately, then maybe your priorities aren't the best. So <laughs> anyway, I'm also not going to show there's going to be other things we're going to need, such as you're going to need an oven or a stovetop of some point of some type. Um, might want to use a microwave. Uh, you're going to need some water. And to be honest, if you don't have water, you have bigger issues and you should have higher priorities than customizing a toy. So with that out of the way, paper plates. Uh, paper plates are good to work on. Um, I usually use several, you know, deep with the figures after I dye them to set them down. I also use them to put, you know, parts and stuff down to kind of organize things. So paper plates, paper cups. Um, you're going to use one of these. You fill with water for your, for your uh, paintbrush. But I have a couple extra on hand. Sometimes you need little parts that you might need to put away. Uh, I'm going to show off uh, Q-tips. I got Q-tips. We'll show those in a second. Toothpicks. I use these to stir the paint, or sometimes if I need to dab a little bit of paint onto something, um, I might use that instead of a paintbrush. Q-tips, also really good in case you have to do any type of cleanup work. I don't know if we'll need to use these, but I'm showing them anyway. Always good to have, I'm sorry, cotton swab, let's not use the brand name. Uh, these are also good for like the pouches and stuff after you dye them to get in to make sure you get all the dye out even after rinsing. So we'll put that off to the side. You're going to need a paintbrush of some type. And we're only going to be doing some light painting. So um, this one should be fine for what we're doing. Um, our paints. For today, I'm going to be using a flat black and a clear. Um, I usually use the Tamiya. Um, it's a brand I like, and you can get these at hobby stores. These are some of the items you're not going to be able to get at the dollar store, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can get them on Amazon, I believe. I happen to have a couple hobby stores near me that stock them, so um, we won't be doing like major painting, but we're going to do a little bit, so let's put this off to the side. Uh, spatula, I usually keep these at hand 
don't need to use it too often. But sometimes when you have a lot of small items in the pot that you have, you know, the stuff dying, sometimes it helps to lift the pieces off. Um, same thing with the tongs. These are also really good for when you're dealing with the figure being boiled. If you have the water too hot and you don't want to burn yourself, that's the other thing. Be very careful. As someone that has scars from third degree burns from my childhood on my arm and on my chest, it kind of sucks. You don't want those burns. I still have nightmares about it, actually. So anyway, we got those out of the way. Wooden spoon. As you can see, this one has been used plenty in the past. And that will be used for stirring when we're actually dyeing the figure. We got a pot. This is a saucepan. This is a cheap saucepan that I've had for many years. It even has a broken handle. You don't want to reuse this for food. So that's why this guy is dedicated just for dying figures. And you can see it has stains in there. So Another thing is when it comes to actual boiling, you're going to need a bowl. Again, this is a cheap dollar store bowl. Um, I clipped this at one point, so I use this just for boiling figures. Um, I You can use a teapot, you can microwave. I usually microwave the water, so we'll be using that. Gloves. You're going to want some latex gloves. You might not be able to pick this up at the dollar store, so um, you can get them just about any hardware store, hobby store. Uh, I've seen them at Kroger. Uh, I bought these when I was at Michael's, so uh, we're going to use that. And finally, the dye. Now, specifically, you want to use the synthetic. Uh, it's graphite. It's going to be black. But you want to use the synthetic. Target doesn't stock these. I've only seen these online. And I don't know if Hobby Lobby has them. Uh, but I do know that Michael's, that's where I usually pick them up. They're about 5 or $6. You can get them online as well. So, um We'll be using the whole bottle. Uh, it's kind of a waste, to be honest, um, because, like I said, there's six bucks. We're only, only going to be doing a few little items that we're going, going to be dying, so it is kind of a waste. So that's why when I am dying figures, I usually save up stuff, and I do a whole bunch of them at once so that I'm you know, saving money and not wasting it. So that is the stuff you'll need. I probably should put this earlier in the video, I know, but... That is what you'll need, and next we're going to go ahead, we're going to start the process, we're going to do the boiling. Okay, so you see we have the steaming bowl of water here. I just microwaved it for about 90 seconds. I might need to go back and heat it up as we go through. So, this is a figure. I've already did the washing of him. I scrubbed him down with soapy water and kind of dried him off a little bit here, so... This is the figure. As I said, be very careful. One thing I should also mention, make sure your hands are clean. Uh, scrub your hands. I was working on my car earlier. I might have a little bit of stains on my figures. So, but I should be good with that. You want to make sure you get all the machine oils and finger oils as much as possible. I mean, obviously, you're going to be touching the figure. You really won't have a problem with that. You can use latex gloves, but... I don't recommend wearing the gloves while dealing with the hot water, so you don't want to melt it on you. But anyway, you should be fine with this. Just don't have Cheeto stuff or any, you know, have a slice of pizza and then and then go ahead and start messing with them. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna put them in the water. We're gonna probably do his, <clears throat> excuse me, do his legs first. So just want to make sure you get them in there deep enough. Oh yeah, he looks like he's comfortable. You usually don't need too long. So we're just going to have him just chill out here for a minute. And anything I could think of to kill a little bit of time. Uh, another tip, I would recommend just like, sorry, my furnace kicked on. If you're doing this, wear clothes you don't mind getting stained. I have, I'm wearing my hoodie that's covered with stains and uh, my sweats that are covered with paint stains and that uh, from doing, you know, various paint things. You know, remember paint class in, in grade school where they would have you uh, put on the, you know, long white shirt or whatever your parents brought in uh, so you don't dirty up your clothes? Yeah, be sure to do that because I actually had a jar of gold leaf paint dump on my lap once and I was wearing some jeans and kind of ruined the jeans. So 
anyway, we had them in for a few seconds here, so we're going to go ahead. The boots should be easy to pull off, so we're just going to go. We're going to try and do this without hitting the camera. You hear that little satisfying pop. Look at this. That one didn't pop, so. Um, Probably, let's do the gloves before we do the pants. So let's get him back for another dunk. To be honest, if I were to think about this ahead of time, I might go ahead and buy a white bowl uh, instead of a black. I happen to have a black bowl that I use for this. So uh, just make things easier to see uh, what you're doing in there. So a little bit of a tip there. So let's go ahead. Water still. You see there's a little bit of rubberiness to it now that it's getting a nice good soaking. I'm going to pop off the glove. That should be about ready. Maybe another second. It takes a little bit of force. You're going to feel the rubberness, but once you've done this a few times, you'll kind of know what it's like and what you need to do. So, um, And when to stop and let it boil some more. Because the plastic the rubbery plastic will deform enough that you can pop things off and then when it cools it'll harden back up so when we reassemble things we're going to be heating them up again and putting it all together which is why I say don't reuse a bowl because you're going to be putting figures in there that you've dyed um, I say the I save the painting for the end so we don't have to worry about that but you still you don't want to eat out of this so let's go ahead and yeah that feels a little bit better there we go that came off easily. See, see how much, how much easier that came off. He's been on there the waist, so we're gonna pop the hips. This is, as they say, the boil and pop method. See how easy that came off. Put that off to the side. But the thing is, it's kind of a misnomer. You don't actually want to boil the figure. You want to have it below boiling because you're going to be dealing with this. You don't want to get burned. And maybe a little bit of bubbles when you first take it off. But as you can see, it's steaming. It's not boiling. I can put my fingers in here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I got nerve damage on this hand. So uh, I wouldn't notice if I was burned anyway. It was my bird barking again. We're going to take off the underpants. This is a soft rubbery, and we might need to put that in a little bit longer. Now, if you have the water too hot, this is why I said the tongs, you can always hold them. If you don't want to reach in there, if you have them completely submerged, not a bad idea. We could take the head off, but there's really no reason to. We don't need to. Um, as you know, the head pops off. You saw it came with an alternate head. So let's go ahead. This is really one of the only parts that's kind of hard to get off. It just takes a little bit of effort, but see, that's the hardest part. See, it slides right off, so, and his belt is just going to slide off as well. Now, when you hear people say drop down hips or drop down legs, they're referring to these ball joints. You see how they kind of move? They can kind of do that. This allows you to get a better range of motion when you're, you have your figure. If the hips can drop down, you get them up a little bit higher. So that's what those are. We're going to take this little patch off. It's still hot enough and loose enough. It's kind of a rubbery thing. Now, here's one of the things I disagreed with uh, Gun Bunny is that he has a really ingenious way. I do got to give him props. What he does is he makes a cut right here to take things off, to take the harness off. And when he's going to put it back on, he takes little thin strips of paper and super glues it on the other side. So you wouldn't be, it wouldn't be visible and it will hold it in place. In this video, he said the reason why he does it is that he doesn't have to deal with the butterfly joint. The butterfly joint is, of course, what makes his arm, you see that, go like that. And I understand. I've worked with the butter butterfly joints on these. They're a pain in the ass, especially if you're not cracking the torso. But you don't need to do that. Uh, since I've had them out of the water for a minute, I'm going to submerge them a little bit more. Do, 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 do. All righty. And this, thanks to the butterfly joints, the fact that we removed that patch, and that we have his gloves, this will slide right off even without the especially without the diaper on you see you get it right off and there boom gone you don't need to cut it 
You don't need to pop the joints off. And there, let me just kind of dab that. I'll slide the water off to the side. So here is our figure disassembled. And I actually don't know where that paint is coming from. <laughs> I, mean, I still had a little bit of something on my hand, but there's something black on there. But that's okay. This is just foam board. It's just cheap. It's not my usual thing anyway. Um, always good not to work on a table that you plan to... <laughs> that you want it to look nice. Uh, always have a good workbench or something. So, all right. That is the figure in pieces. And I will be back in just a moment. I'm going to do a quick cut. And I'm going to show you something. Okay, and we're back. Now, as you see, I have separated everything. I put it on a paper plate. Uh, this is so that I can see what I'm working with. Now, when I'm doing a customization, I usually take a picture. In fact, I'll take several pictures. Uh, this way, I can see what I'm dealing with, especially the items that I'm going to be dyeing, because I'm going to be putting them in a <laughs> black, basically, saucepan with a whole bunch of black liquid in it that you can't see. So I'm going to go ahead, take a photo, but since I'm recording this, I don't need to take a photo. So I'm going to separate what we will be dyeing because that's going to be the next step. Obviously, torso, we won't be dyeing that. We won't be dyeing the legs. Now, we also won't be dyeing the, uh, the, the, uh, the diaper. I didn't show this, I forgot to show this in the previous segment, uh, the dagger holster here, the sheath. Uh, I forgot to pull that off the leg, so I did it between cuts here. Now, for those of you who are astute, you may remember, hey, you said we weren't doing any weapons. And I mentioned about foreshadowing something earlier. Well, you may notice a little gold thing here and a gun. Now... Remember when I was talking about when I opened the locker and I double-checked the bag for missing parts? Well, this did not come with the Cobra officer, the Python Patrol um, officer. This is actually the gun and ammo clip from the Cobra Valkyrie 2-pack. Now, I did take the Cobra Valkyrie 2-pack, um, disassembled the one Valkyrie that has this kind of goldish-yellow stuff, and I dyed all her harnesses, her webbing, and her weapons. However, when I got it all aside, even though I took a photo, I was doing inventory. I was like, wait a minute. Something's missing. And I realized that the ammo clip was still in the bag. I had to dig it out of the garbage and dig it out. So while the gun got dyed, the ammo clip didn't. And so this is a great time to show you another little tip. So this is how it goes in. Um, again, this isn't for this figure, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this inserted, uh, the ammo clip, is really small, really small, hard to uh, see inside the, inside the uh, saucepan, but I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to dye this gun again with the ammo clip in it, because what will happen, this is a little uh, tip, that if you dye this, it will dye the entire thing it will die up into there so <laughs> this will be a good uh, uh chance to show this off hopefully it'll work hopefully it won't prove me wrong but i've done it enough in the past so um another little tip i'm going to tell you and that i'm not going to do is before you dye something especially when you have like harder plastic you might want to hit it with some like acetone some paint remover to get some of these colors off like uh this has the um, straps on the X's, the armband has the Cobra insignia and the Python Patrol. Now, I have done that on previous figures, and it didn't really make much of a difference, and I didn't want to scrape it off. So, honestly, it will barely be noticeable. Um, yeah, you won't be able to really see that. One thing you may see is the gray on the helmet may not take the dye as well. It may be slightly discolored. Uh, depends on how long we're going to dye it. And of course the goggles. So we'll put that off to the side. So this is what we are going to dye. So I'm going to get things ready and I will show that next. 
Okay, here we are. We're at the stove here. I got the stuff over to the side, things we're going to need. Uh, this is the pot, uh, the saucepan we're going to use. Uh, don't laugh at the stove. It's older than some of you people that are watching the video, but that's cool because they don't make them like this anymore. This thing's a tank. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our dye. We're going to open it up. And here's a little tab thing in here. You know what? I'm going to practice what I preach, and I'm going to put gloves on. Uh, again, always be careful when you're working with the oven. Um, I nor refuse are not responsible for you burning your house down. So let me go ahead. I'm just gonna dig a couple, couple gloves out. Again, they're nothing fancy. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing this, I'm actually only wearing one glove. And uh, uh, years ago, I could have done uh, a Michael Jackson. Hi, but uh, yeah, uh, age and years of smoking did not do wonders on my vocal cords. So I will not be doing that. So let's go ahead. Let's get the other glove on here. So. All right, got our gloves here. Um, we're going to put it on this burner. So let's go ahead and let's get this little bit off here. All right, as you can see, that is pretty dark. So I'm going to pour the whole thing in here. And I usually don't follow the instructions. I don't even remember the last time I read the instructions on this. So I'm going to put some water in. All right. Now, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. I almost dumped some. You see, it's pretty dark. I am actually going to add a little bit more water to this. The reason is this stuff is actually pretty good. It doesn't water down too terribly easily. And yeah, we'll have to wipe this off. Uh, the stuff can stain, but this is uh, stainless steel. That'll be fine. So what we're going to do is we are going to we we'll put this on. You see that? We're gonna go really low. Well, we're gonna go high heat for a little bit because we don't want this to boil. So I'm just doing this for a quick, you know, think of it like uh, defrosting meat in the microwave. I'm only going to go up a little high. There we go. And while I'm waiting, I'm just going to clean up some of the mess I made there. So, now this will take a few minutes. Um, what I recommend is getting this up to a point where it's steaming, maybe just almost bubbling. You don't want to go that high uh, because you are going to have soft plastic inside here touching metal. It's easy for it to become warped and deformed. The helmet is really good for that happening. So what you're going to be doing, and you're going to absolutely love this, is you're going to be sitting here for an hour stirring just about every minute. You're going to stir the dye up and you're going to stir the pieces inside. Make sure that they move around, that they don't just sit on the bottom. And yeah, just put that off to the side there. And yeah, this is what uh, you'll be doing for the next eh, hour or so. I do minimum an hour. Um, this is softer plastic, might not need that long. Uh, most of the part, the, the boots are a little harder, so might go a little bit longer than that. And obviously, I'm not gonna do the whole video of me saying, I'm not even gonna do a um, capture over that. So let's go ahead and let's see, what is our thing at? I'd probably go a little bit higher just at the beginning, because. I don't recommend doing it this way. I recommend keeping it at low heat until it heats up a little bit. And then um, keep it at a standard low heat. So I am going to go ahead. I'm going to start dropping things in. 
Now, you may see that the helmet is kind of floating there. So we're just going to take it and get down there. Get down, get down. Now I drop things in one at a time. Here's our gun. The reason why I drop things in one at a time is because I don't want to risk dumping things over and maybe slipping and things go underneath into the fire. And plus it helps me keep track of what's going on. So, just a couple more items. We do the goggles as well here. And then the holster. So everything is in here now. So, we're just gonna stir it a little bit. About every two minutes, every minute, two, three minutes. You know, if you have to go to the bathroom, as long as it's number one, you'll be fine. Anything longer, if you've had Taco Bell, I recommend waiting until that's out of your system before doing this. Because you're not going to want to let things sit here unattended and without being stirred. So, and this is it. This is what will be going on for the next, like I said, hour or so. So, I will come back when that is done and I'll show you what happens next. Okay, welcome back. Uh, it has now been one viewing of Justice League Crisis on Two Earths later. <laughs> I had to play it on my tablet while I was stirring occasionally. And, oh my God, that's like the best DC animated uh, uh, movie, isn't it? Um, if not, let me know what you think. But let's go back to this. So I actually went a little bit longer, probably closer to an hour and a half. Now, as you can see, a lot of this has steamed off. Now, one thing I did not say, uh, I didn't turn it on um, when I was recording. I did it when I wasn't recording this. It's a good idea to turn on, like, uh, the hood on your stove to breathe, to, to pull the stuff away. Uh, it's not toxic. Uh, at least I don't think it is. Um, but it's just probably a good idea anyway. So I turned it off before I you know, started recording. So here we are. Uh, we now have the items that are that have been dyed. And like I said, it's been probably about an hour and a half. So um, what I normally do is try to work around the camera. Is I start off and I take the spoon and I start, you know, picking the stuff out. You know, sometimes I use a spatula. There's a boot coming up. Um, here, if you want to see how much is really left, I'm going to do things a little bit different. Um, about 10 minutes before I'm finished, I turn off the heat and I keep, you know, stirring. But after about 10 minutes or so, uh, it should be cooled down enough that with the glove on, we can actually just reach in and grab stuff. So that's what I'm going to do here. Put it on our paper plate here. And as you can see, we got our harness, we got one of our boots. The sheaths, we got the belt buckle. Let's keep reaching in and grabbing stuff. Okay, we've got one of the hands, another one of the gloves. Uh, here's the helmet. We can see that. Now, I know this is going to be hard to see on the plate with everything black, you know, with the black dye here. So, should still be a gun. This is why I say take a photo. Oh, there's the gun. There's the armband, and I think that, nope, nope, we still have the boot and the backpack holster. So, yep, there's a boot, and, oh, the goggles. I did forget the goggles. Can you see that? And, like I said, this is why I take a picture. There's the holster. So, that should be everything. And yeah, I have to clean up the stove. I have dripped a bunch. So, um, you see, I'm only wearing one glove. I've done this enough that I'm usually pretty careful. So here is everybody out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, dab it off with a paper towel, and then I'm going to rinse it off really well before I take off the gloves. Because there's still going to be dye in the little pockets of, like, the holster and that. So, but... Maybe be able to get some to drip out here, maybe. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do that. I'm going to dab these guys off, um, rinse them off really well, dry them up, and then we'll go back 
to the table for the reassembly. All right, so we are back at the table. I'm going to scoot my chair in a little bit closer. Hopefully I don't hit the tripod here. Now, we still have our figure over here, the parts we didn't die. Here is all the stuff that we did die. Um, I rinsed them off thoroughly. Uh, I recommend uh, putting a stopper in the sink um, just in case. Uh, rinse it off and um, you can empty the sink and then go back. Because the last thing you want is to have like one of these guys, you know, something this small, fall down the sink. So, um, I've rinsed these off, mostly dried them off. And what I'm going to do, not really a necessary step, but it's always a good idea, I feel, is these big things. Of course, make sure. Yeah, still a little bit of dye. Now, sometimes you will get a little bit of dye uh, staining. What I would recommend is if you're working with a figure that may be a different color, say if this figure was blue, he does have some of these little off colors here. Oh, by the way, I actually did pretty well, only got a little bit of smidgen of dye on me, a little bit of my thumb there. So, um, that's <laughs> better than I usually do. Uh, a little bit of scrubbing, this will be off in a day or two. Um, but since this is a black figure, if we don't give this a lot of time, usually if I'm dying, I'll give this like 24 hours to fully dry um, to minimize any type of, you know, rub off of the dye, which can happen. So just be aware of that. Since this is a black figure, mostly, I'm not going to worry too much about it. So, uh, but what I am going to do is just kind of get in here at some of these open spots. You see a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Don't really have to do the uh, joints because you're not going to see them. Um, but yeah, when I rinse them off, I towel them off. I don't get the, you know, paper towels in there enough. So I just like to give these guys just a little bit. Not much of a hole there. So just kind of give that a little bit. Um, we're going to get in here. Uh, these smaller bits. Uh, I'll just use a toothpick. Oop, I'm flinging stuff around. Great. A Q-tip. Sorry, a cotton swab is on the floor, so Butters is going to find that. I just like to... Yep, she found it already. <laughs> so, yeah. I just like to get a little bit of that out. Make sure. Make sure there's not really any tackiness. And kind of get in there. Now, again, with the sheath here, that's a really small hole. So, that's what she said. Okay, yeah, I have had this where I've done some of these figures and a whole gloop of dye came back out. Because um, I don't think there's a hole at the end there, so it just kind of puddles in there. Yeah, see, there's a little bit of staining on that, so... So we're just going to go ahead, get that out, and I think I did that already. And let's get this guy. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, nothing major. Uh, sometimes in the helmet, good idea, because this will... Uh, bubble up and collect didn't really do too bad got a little bit of uh misshape in there but that's nothing i can just heat that back up i pop that back into place but that's actually i'm not even too sure it wasn't like that to begin with it may have been but it's on the back of the figure we're not going to really notice it uh no patches on here so we're good on that and let's go ahead remember i told you this is the cobra valkyrie um, this is the clip. The gun was already dyed. I popped the clip in before we dyed it. And so let's see if we have that yellowish, yellowish orange tint. Nope. We're good. Look at that. Um, I can see a little bit of stuff on there though. So let's just get that kind of clean. And 
grab a toothpick and just slide it in the hole there. I already used it. That's what she said joke. Yeah. But the, the dye will sink in there. Uh, it will absorb and go up in. So that's what's nice about it. Because like I said, you're dyeing, you're actually changing the properties of the plastic. So pop that back in. All right. So you may notice I already got the hot water, hot water, hot water, hot water. So I'm still trying to look where that cotton swab went before my cat finds it. And we're going to start putting things back together. Uh, let's do the harness first. So don't really need to um, to put him in the, in the water. We shouldn't need to. Probably going to hurt. But, you know, he's got the uh, butterfly here, the butterfly joint. So, because we'll probably have that all the way back. Yeah. I need a little bit of a click to that. Anyway, so this is actually the hard part to do. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, Gun Buddy Customs, he cuts it. I don't like to cut it. So I have some paper towels here. I have some paper towels in my hoodie pocket. So this should still be hot. I heated it up just before I started recording this segment. So I'm just going to kind of dab that off a little bit here. And so that's the front. And what we're going to do here is kind of slide him through the bottom part. Get over the drop down hips. And we're going to get these arms back as far as we can. And we're going to see how it's back behind him. Like he's about to be arrested. Get that over his back butt and the hips and we're just going to kind of work its way up no need to rush it if we need to we can always heat it up just a wee bit longer get it over his elbows and when we get it up it's just going to like jump into place so like i said i've already done this several times and let's see here get it over the elbows wouldn't it suck if this is the first time I had one of these break on me? <laughs> oh, all right. That's not going up. I see where it's getting caught. I'm going to heat them up a little bit longer. Make the rubber plastic parts a little bit more malleable. All right. And let's go ahead and... Uh, there we go. And the chest harness is on. Uh, just kind of strain it up a bit. There we go. Now, one thing, remember I mentioned about uh, the paint and taking acetone and, you know, trying to get some of the designs off? I don't really mess with it because, like I said, I've tried, didn't really have good results with it. If you look really closely, let me kind of dab them off. Let me see if this shows up here. Those yellow bits, the straps, do leave little gray X's. I hope that's showing up here. If you'll focus. I actually kind of like the way that looks. It's pretty subtle, and it doesn't look like the Python Patrol standard uh, coloring. So I like that. No reason for me to try and work to get that paint off. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna do the little arm thing. Uh, similar thing, this had Python Patrol here and the Cobra symbol. Uh, will it focus? See if I can get the focus. Very, very lightly can you make it out. Um, the Python Patrol is harder to make out. You can see a little bit of the Cobra signal symbol. So let's just go ahead, dip that in the water. I'll give that a moment. And we're going to have to do the belt here in a minute. So let's go ahead. In fact, I'm going to drop the belt in right now, pre stage that. And then we're just going to slide this up the left arm. The tag goes upwards, so 
All right, there we go. That's already in, in place. Now, the belt. I want to move the hip diaper part. And yeah, let's do the legs. Let's do the legs next. And the belt. Which way was the front? This is the front. This one you don't even really need to put in the water. It goes on really well. Now the hip, uh, the diaper, trouser, underwear, whatever you want to call it. Um, one of the harder parts because it's really tight in there. So we're going to give that uh, just a minute or so. Uh, we got this. And we still need to do the gloves and boots. So I'm just going to put those over there. Um, so it's more in my sight. But yeah, we'll hold off a moment. So let's go ahead and see. I might need to heat up the water a little bit more. Uh, go in, go in. Okay, there we go. All right, we got the pants on. We pull the belt buckle down if we want to. Um, don't need to worry about that at the moment. So I'm going to put the boots and the gloves. And let's start pulling the legs off. This one is the right leg. You can tell by the orientation of that. So if you look really closely, these balls are more like maces. They have like little studs on them. So uh, let's see here. Click on. This is going to be like the last of the thick parts we need to boil. So I shouldn't need to heat up the water again. There we go. Legs are in. Let's pop this in. Because we're, we're going to go over the knee on that. Alright. While we're waiting on that. Uh, where are our hands? Just dab this on some of the water. Get some of that. Uh, the paper towel here. Get some of that off. We're going to pop the gloves in. Doesn't really give that satisfying pop, does it? So, there we go. Okay, doing it over to the left here so I don't hit the camera. Where is that other glove? Glove, where are you? There he is. Dab it on the paper towel here. Okay, good. I still know my right from left. And just kind of get it in there. All right, so we got that. We're almost done reassembling. Let's get that sheath on. Uh, this one is kind of a pain. Um, I've got to remove this, as you recall, um, when, during the disassembly. And I find it comes off a lot easier than it goes on for some reason. Okay. All the wrinkles in the... Uh, in the pants and then we gotta go over the knee without breaking the straps so see we're hitting that kneecap there we go over that pull and then come on All right, almost done. The top of the sheath should be at the uh, side pivot. So let me just go up a little bit more. The one thing I like about this as opposed to the Valkyries is that these stay in place. The Valkyrie, um, the female Cobra soldiers, uh, they their things tend to fall down their legs. So... All right, I'll probably put that down just a little bit here. And, oh, I think it folded. Did it fold? Sometimes that happens that these roll on you, but I think we're good now. I think we're good. All right, so we got his sheath on. We got his belt on. Let's get his boots Dab that off, get a little bit. 
that is the left boot, so that one made a little squeak, a little calf queef. Can I say that? I don't know if I can say that. All right, and there. Our figure is reassembled. And there it goes. Now if we want to just make sure I got all that dabbed off. We can put this on here. Got his oops. There. Got his helmet on. And now he looks like a Cobra Trooper. So I'm going to leave this off for now. So now we have one major thing left to do. And that is his kneecap. So I'm going to dry him off a little bit, clean this up. We're, good. We're going to go on to the next step. Okay, so we have boiled and popped. We've dyed. We've disassembled. We've reassembled. But there's still one last thing is our kneecaps. We still have the Python Patrol kneecaps. Now, I know I keep referring to uh, Gun Bunny's video. Um, it's a good example of, like I said, where I got the idea. All credit to him. Now, what he did was when he did his kit bash with the Cobra officer, the OG one, and the Python Patrol, he also switched their kneecaps. Now, I am not going to do this. Um, no, obviously, it's too late. I've already dyed everything. Um, the reason for that, and this is where another thing I kind of disagree with him with, is I, f I feel like this, the, uh, what do they say, the juice is not worth the squeeze, to be honest, because the pins on these are a pain in the neck. Um, some other figures, like uh, Marvel Legends, although not all of them, and they're getting more towards the pinless, they generally have a pin that's kind of like a mushroom, where it's bigger on one side, smaller on the other, but still enough to get in. So I'm just going to explain to you, uh, if you heat up the figure, as we've been doing, and you take a like needle nose pliers or something, and you push it in on the smaller side, so that the bigger side pops out, you take it out here, and you take it out here. And there's the leg, the calf part, and the kneecap. The reason why I'm not doing that is, like I said, it's a pain in the neck. I did it with one of my figures, and what happened was the pin bent, and it took me a very long time to fix it. Because the pins on this figure are more like dumbbells. Um, they're equal on both sides with a thick part in the middle where this joint part goes. And it, like I said, I, I thought I might have screwed up that figure, but I was able to fix it. And like I said, it's I did it that one time. And it wasn't worth doing it three more times on one figure. And besides, when he did his... Oh, still got a little bit of uh, something coming off there. Something's still a little damp. Um, yeah, still a little bit of darkness. Um... On his figure, when he switched the knees, he still had to paint the back here because on his custom uh, Python Patrol, it had the blue things here, whereas the um, the uh, the OG Cobra officer had the black. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Anyway, I'll show. I'll throw up a picture. I'll show it. So anyway, the point is, he still had to paint it anyway. So. If you're going to paint it, you might as well just paint the kneecaps. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bend these guys here. Okay, put them in a crouching, uh, kind of chill position. Maybe put his arms back. Uh, we don't really need to do that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get some of my flat black paint. Let me grab one of my... One of my toothpicks, I'm going to stir it up because I think my paint's getting low. Um, when I went to the store to buy some more, they were out of the flat black. Now, you can do semi-gloss instead of doing it this way. You can do a semi-gloss black. I'm going to do a flat black and then put clear on top of it. Kind of get the same effect. It's the way I would like to do it. Um, there are arguments to be made both ways. Uh, some could say I'm actually just adding on an extra layer. Yeah, see, that's really low. But for what we're doing, we don't really need a lot. Um, and yeah, I am almost out. Uh, we're only going to be doing a little bit. So I don't think it's a problem with doing the two coats. 
Now, probably will lose some of the details. There are little carved details in here. And the reason why I think this is a great figure because we're going black on black. We don't really need to be super crazy accurate. And so I'm just going to wet my brush a little bit here. I got a cup full of water. You can do a, a dry brush. I'm going to do kind of a wet brush here. Um, now, the experienced painters who are watching this are going to be probably getting pissed. They're not going to like the way I'm doing this, which is fine. This isn't for experienced painters. This is for the novices. And all we're going to do here is we're just going to cover it. Um, the reason why I wanted to do this like this is I want to get up into the joint here. This is actually kind of awkward. I'm not used to being at this angle. I'm kind of leaning over. A dry paint would probably, a dry brush method would probably be um, a little bit better for this, but as I said, we're just going to cover all the green. And if we slip, we're doing black on black anyway. You'll notice it under this light because I'm under several lights here. So, you know, I didn't think about it, but in the time that I was uh, um, bore, um, dying the figure, I could have charged my other, uh, my other, uh, fill lamp. So there's still a little bit of green behind the knee. I'm just going to kind of dig in there. And yes, like I said, I know all the experienced painters are going to be really, they're going to be yelling and I get it and not normally the way I would do this, but for something like this, it's not that big of a deal. Just do, uh, do better on your toy. I'll do this on mine. And it's all about what you're happy with. Um, if you're happy with it at the end of the day, that's still a little too much paint on my brush. This probably isn't the best brush either, it's just I happen to have it close by. I've got a whole array of brushes. Now one of the things that kind of messes this up for me is that I'm doing this under a whole bunch of lights. And I'm having trouble seeing what is a reflection from the light and what is the actual paint reflecting so I think we got that knee done and I'm just gonna get that other knee there is kind of like a little indent there which I probably should have dry brushed that but again that's okay we're not too worried about our kneecaps, right? These are just to protect our knees. In fact, if anything, they should be scratched up. But that joke is setting itself up, isn't it? Sorry, I was down here. I should be closer into the camera view. The outside part is a lot easier to get in there than the inside, which has a little bit. A little bit at the top there. Again, parts that most people aren't going to see. They see this knee is already starting to dry. See, it's a flat black. Sorry, my furnace is kicking on again. It is December after all. And I think... I think that's good. So, now at this point... I'm just going to rinse this off here. At this point... You could leave that flat black. I actually, the some of the figures I did, this might be my fourth one I've done already. Um, I think the flat black still looks good. Uh, as you see, it's drying out on this side. That's still wet. It, it looks fine. You know, we do have some of the grayish, I guess you could say. Um... But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry. A lot of times when I am doing a figure, when I am painting, especially, you know, bigger areas, I'll sometimes give it 24 hours to dry. Again, remember what we said, we're in no hurry whatsoever. So 
I'm not going to give this 24 hours. I'm just going to give this a little bit of time for it to dry, for it to set, and and then I'm going to go over with the clear. And yeah, um, we still have to do something about these goggles. So I'll think about that while we're uh, while we're waiting. See you in a minute. Well, here we are again. It's always such a pleasure. I, uh, between cuts here, I went ahead and I touched up a few little spots I missed, uh, just to make sure, but I don't think it came out too badly. I don't know how well it shows up on camera. Um, still have the details. So, again, a dry brush method, uh, you want to look it up. I went a little bit heavy on that, but again, this is for novices. We're not too worried about the individual. I'm not too worried about it because I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm now going to put a clear coat over that. Again, I think, let's straighten one of these knees out. I think it actually looks fine. You could probably even keep it that way. But you know what? I want it to be a little shiny. So that's why I, I did it two ways. I did it flat. I'm going to go with clear over it. So let me go ahead. Shouldn't really have to mix this up. I always do. Just kind of do that. Now, since we're not really going to have any paint rub on this, um, if, for example, the back of the knee, um, where, as I mentioned, uh, Gun Bunny, he'll probably get some paint rub back there, so he might want to put some nail polish in there. Um, clear nail polish is really good for helping with paint rub. You can also go in and sand things down, but again, we're not taking the knees apart, so... All right, and this is going to be the same thing. I clean my brush. Always clean your brush. And get some of this off here. It's harder to tell when it's not like a single color on there. So, and I'm just going to go ahead. And I don't need to get into the cracks on this. We're just going to go over the surface. Uh, again, it's maybe still a little heavy. But this is just going to give it a little bit of shine. I nicked a little spot there. Uh, if this were like a single, like a solid color, like if I was going with like a blue, I'd clean that off. But it's just going to be clear. It's going to be in the joint. We're not going to really see it. So I almost painted the wrong part there. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get the other knee. Get into that little crease there. Now, also, when I'm doing this, I'm not doing it now because of all the lighting, but I wear a little headlamp, a little headband that has a lamp on it. You've probably seen them. And they're really good for seeing what I'm doing when I'm looking straight on. I'm actually doing this at an angle. I'm sitting off to the side here and trying to do it that way. So it's a way I'm not usually used to doing. So I'm just going to kind of get a little bit in there. That's a little rough, but it's fine. You see how that one's a little bit smoother? That was me on that, but I'm going to keep that that way. So I'm going to let that dry. Let's rinse this off. Now let's go back to the goggles. Um, I had an idea while I was doing this, while I was waiting for things to dry. I noticed that my gray paint um, actually slipped a little bit. I know I didn't mention this at the beginning. I wasn't thinking about it. This actually isn't even a necessary thing. I'm kind of doing this as a bonus, but remember the goggles? Yeah, I had an idea for that. So let's see how this is going to turn out. Um, I have, I got a little bit of paint on me. I have, I'm going to pull one of these over. These really cool chrome pins. I'll give you an example. This is the armored uh, Spider-Man based on the Insomniac video game. And what I did is I went over it with a chrome pen, highlighted, you know, all the metal parts and chromed them and added like a little bit like to the bottom of this uh, mask there. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It makes it really shiny. So I decided, put that over with my works in progress, that I'm going to take one of my liquid chrome pens. It gives a mirror effect. Uh, who makes this again? Uh, let's see, is it saying on here? Oh yeah, Molotow. So is it 
on how well you can see that. Um, you can get these online. Um, I noticed my hobby store now carries these, but I think they wanted like $15 a pen, which is more than I paid for a three pack of one millimeter, two millimeter, and four millimeters. So give this a really good shake. I hear that shaking. All right. Let me see. It's just a little pen. I'm going to dab it on a surface here. Make sure. I haven't used this in a while, so I want to make sure it's uh, not dried out. All right. Now, this is going to be kind of difficult for me to do here. It's very fine work for me to do on camera, so I really have no idea how this is going to turn out. So we're all going to learn together. Like I said, this is kind of a little bonus thing. Let's see. Did I slip a little bit on it? I might slipped a little bit on it. Maybe a little bit. But anyway, see how it's giving that nice little glare on that? So I'm pulling it in close so I can see it. Sorry, I know some things are better to do on camera, but there are some things, I got a cat hair on my finger, some things that are just hard to do from a distance, especially when I'm wearing my glasses here. Uh, a little bit sloppier than I would normally do, but that's fine. Uh, like I said, this is just a little bonus thing. Was it really planning? Um, I was thinking of while I was making this video, the idea of painting these gray popped into my head. And because I actually forgot about them. Um, I never used these on the figures, so I'm going to... Hi, I should be on camera doing this, right? So, just kind of delicate and see how that works. The stuff does tend to pool a little bit, so you got to be careful on that. And I'm just going to go ahead, where you can't see it, but I can, just do some little spots I missed. And there, you see that? In the focus here. Nice little silver reflective goggles. Now they do have... They do have slits down here, if you remember. I think there are red slits. I'm not going to worry about it. Maybe later I might use a Gundam marker and put in there. But, again, I'm not too worried about this. This is actually just kind of a bonus thing to show really how cool these are. So, um highly recommend these if you're doing anything that needs, like, a chrome effect. Um Like I said, this is the one millimeter um, for the bigger spots of Spider-Man here, you know, like most of the head and the spider emblem on the back. I did the, I used the four millimeter. Uh, it's a, obviously bigger, so. All right, I'm going to put that off to the side here. How are we doing? We're just about done. Uh, you know, one thing you could do, I'm just going to add this as a last minute thing. Again, another last minute kind of tip is... I'm not sure what type of material that's supposed to be. Um, the kneecaps, that is. You know, like IRL, what they were supposed to be. Uh, are they supposed to be like some type of copper, uh, carbon, you know, uh, fiberglass? Uh, military people could tell me. I've never worn kneecaps like uh, knee pads like this. Um, are they metal? Because they're metal, we can do something really cool here. Uh, I want to do just kind of a little dry brush here. I do this on some of my armored figures um, where if I want to give it some weathering like where paint scrapes off. Alright, I've got my what is this? This is the one that's leaking. It's uh, This is chrome silver. Uh, sometimes I'll use a different uh, like more of a gunmetal gray. So let's see here. Let's see how this will look. I could abs absolutely ruin the figure. So I'm going to put a little dab on my brush. I said this was leaking, so. I dab that off a little bit. And what we would do is on an area that would have contact, uh, maybe on the knee or on the corner, there's a brush, there's a hair. That's the problem with having cats. 
sometimes these hairs get everywhere. So we're just going to kind of take this. And I'm just going to do a quick little, quick little rub like that. You know, I like parts that are lifted up. Maybe on uh, make it match. Maybe hit some of the bottom like he's been seeing. Now I know uh, knee pads; it should wear more at the bottom. But just trying to show, and you can do stuff like that. So just rinse that off here. And we are basically done. Um, let me go ahead and... Uh, oh, sorry. That was catching the light there. So, that's it. We are pretty much done with the figure. And that's all there is to it. Uh, I went ahead and got the Baroness. And like, she's checking them out. You know. And, yeah, that's, that's all there is to it. Um, I put on his accessories here. And I think it all turned out pretty well. Got his gun up there. You can see even the Cobra logo on the back there. And yeah, I thought this would be a real fun thing to do. Um, yeah, because, you know, sometimes people are a little bit uh, nervous when it comes to customizing for the first time. And, you know, they, they uh, don't know where to start or, you know, they see all these things. And I thought this figure is a great figure to do a little tutorial on many of the basics. So um, I call this the Stealth Viper. Now, I know people are going to be like, that's not really a Stealth Viper. Uh, vipers are different. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's my gosh darn figure. I've had enough people give me problems about I will call my gosh darn figure whatever the gosh darn heck I want to. So, yeah, I call these the Stealth Vipers. And because uh, I think Night Viper's already taken. But anyway, I hope you learned a thing or two from this. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope this gives you, if you're a novice, you've never done this before. I hope this gives you some confidence to go ahead and... Uh, try things out on your own. So anyways, as always, thanks for watching.